welcome to session two of uh, preparing a subject leader for a subject focused deep dive as part of the Ofsted inspection. Uh, this session is around ensuring how we present uh, a coherent and consistent message, as well as looking at uh, a sample range of questions we could be uh, expect to be asked on an inspection. Just a quick recap, as I said at the start of session one, a deep dive is in essence a subject specific review where over the space of say an hour and a half to two hours, an Ofsted inspector and a subject leader will explore all aspects of teaching and learning within the, the identified subject. And as I said in session one, this will include both observing learning in practice, looking at evidence of past learning, be it in pupils exercise books, folders, displays, etc. The inspector will also undertake uh, have conversations with pupils who they've seen in a, a, a learning classroom environment, as well as talking to other teaching colleagues within the school. And as I said, and to reiterate, the whole point of these sessions is to enable subject leaders to be on the front foot in terms of being prepared as to their role within an Ofsted inspection and the sort of questions they can be asked uh, during any conversations and interviews. So we looked at specifically the role of the subject leader in an Ofsted inspection in the last session, where I referred to many of the sections or the paragraphs in the Ofsted handbook, which specifically relate to the role of a subject leader. They are all found in resource one, which is on the HEP website as part of the associated materials that go along with this these uh, three little broadcasts. And in this session, as I said, we're going to look at how do we present a coherent, consistent message and what questions can we be asked? And in session three, as it says, we'll look at how we put together a rigorous and robust subject self-evaluation report. Briefly, those are some of the themes that we explored in session one, which is all available on the website beside this particular presentation as well. So let's just start straight into, how do we ensure that we present a consistent message? Well, firstly, I think it's really important, you know, that the, we have consistency of language that we use. And whatever we're saying and whatever we're presenting, please make sure it is based upon evidence. It's from what you've experienced, what you've seen, what you've heard, what you've read, what you've listened to, whatever it is. It's not on your sort of, as it were, without being disrespectful, your gut reaction, your perception of what is actually going on in relation to your subject. It is based upon evidence. And a couple of points to bear in mind. Intent, and we know about curriculum to intent as being one of the three eyes, and it's both in terms of the whole school's curriculum intent, as well as the intent for particular subjects. And intent is very much along the lines of, it is what pupils will experience, what they will have, you know, will be learning, will be taking part in, and not along the lines of sometimes phrases that we use along, that they maybe do things, or they'll have opportunities to do things. I do believe that intent is more than you have an opportunity to do something. It's actually that actually you will do something. So along the line, you know, it could be that pupils will undertake field work in the school grounds and in the local area. Pupils will go on a trip to see a place of interest, not just that they will have opportunities to. The other thing I think is really important in terms of consistency of language is in case considering that we starting so many of the sentences or bullet points or however we represent our information that we focus on the pupils stroke children or the learners. Okay, and in this little context, you know, as I say, around intent, it's actually rather than we, i.e. teachers or school, as it were, will do the following or will encourage them to, or aim for them to do, or give them opportunities, it will be start off that the learner will. I just think, in all the documentations I read, 
when you see that the, the child, the learner, is front and center of any documentation, you then know what's going to follow is going to focus directly upon those learners rather than a lot of times we can be in danger in schools of writing lots of documentations about what we as teachers will do maybe more so than what they as it were the learners will do and that's just something for you to be thinking about whenever you're writing any reports or you're presenting anything be thinking am i starting with the learner and the other thing about it is don't just say that the learner will etc in a generic sense try to make it specific to your subject so in terms of mfl or in terms of music or in terms of pe or whatever the subject is always include specifics in relation to the subject you're leading please don't just write things in terms of generalities and then wherever possible give an example you know and don't worry, you can't give an example for every year group in an all through primary school where you've got years one to six, you know, nursery and reception. You can't be putting eight different examples in, but maybe over the course of whatever you're presenting, you could make sure that you do have an example from the early learning, uh, early years foundation stage, key stage one, lower and maybe upper key stage two. But do make sure you give some specific examples to back up and to reinforce. But central the point being intent is about will and not just where they have an opportunity to and actually really consider that we start our sentences or our bullet points however we present it and we're starting off by talking about what the learner will experience not just about what we as teachers stroke the school are going to provide and as i mentioned it off it's really really important that we do make sure that we are actually addressing in our writing the needs of all the boys and girls and especially more so now because I do believe that the current Ofsted handbook has far more references into how do we meet the needs of pupils with special educational needs and disabilities and as I mentioned this in the session one if you're sitting you know as a subject leader if you're working through this thinking right you know I'm not an expert on meeting the needs of these boys and girls where can I go for guidance my first pit stop would always be the professional subject association as well as talking to my senko you know the leader of send in, in my school but the subject association websites have all got some an increasing amount of good resources good and better resources on there so how do i make sure i present a consistent message now forgive me with my first bullet point but please always read the question Sometimes we can be in danger of even ourselves as teachers, I'm afraid to say, of starting to read something, thinking that's asking is about X, when in a sense it might have been asking is about X and Y. For example, there is one of the questions you will see in resource three, which asks about, could you tell me what are the strengths in teaching, learning and assessment for your subject? Now, as I referred to in the previous slide, we can be in danger of writing and talking a lot about what we as teachers are doing and maybe less so as to what children are learning. So, you know, going back to that question, strengths in teaching, learning and assessment, just think there are three parts to that question. Forgive me if I'm spelling this out, but I have sent a few comments back to various colleagues in the past couple of terms, just saying you've missed a little part of that question and quite a, an important part. The second thing is, as, as I said in the previous session, I always go through something like an Ofsted handbook in particular, to be honest, identifying what I call the key command words. So don't just read each of the bullet points and just you know read from one to two to three and so forth, but go through them with some highlighter pens or whatever you need to do, just to pick out what is that bullet point there? What are the key bits within it? And for example, in the first one, so what are the endpoints the curriculum is building towards? It's not just that they do this topic in the summer term in year six. It's actually what will they be as an art and design student, pupil, learner by the end of year six? How does the curriculum help build up 
from their first topic at the start of year one to their final topic at the end of year six. And by the end of that, what will pupils need to know and be able to do in order to get to that end point? So I think by actually really going into these bullet points, and as you see, as you go through them um, in, in the handbook, which are all pointed out in resource one, each of the bullet points are there, do pick out the key command words thinking, am I really addressing the key command words? What well, the essence of that bullet point is asking for. And again, you know, what endpoints the curriculum is building towards and what pupils need to know and be able to do to reach that. So what would your response be to there? Now, clearly, just briefly, it's going to start, isn't it, with the learners. The learners will. This is where they're going to be, not we're going to plan it, we're going to do this, we're going to make sure, etc. That can all come as a response to the, the learners. So when you're thinking about this, as I keep you know, banging on about, how am I gonna start my, my explanation of this in talking about the learners? And likewise, here, yeah. what's my response to that? The school's curriculum is planned and sequenced so that new knowledge is being built upon. So the learners are going to learn in year one. What is it? How is that going to be built on in part of their learning in year two? So try not to fall in the trap of just talking about what I've put in place in terms of the building blocks, but thinking about it specifically, what are they learning as a consequence of this? And actually, what is the local context for my school in terms of what are the gaps? in pupils knowledge and skills how does the curriculum meet their needs do we have children attending our school that come from a variety of places around the world and if so how are we going to accommodate that as we plan the curriculum or not implying that you've not already got a plan in place but how we might be modifying it and developing it over time to better address the needs that might be in terms of what you might have identified as a school as some of those gaps. As how's that going to? So some some key points there. These are all uh, in either a resource one. They get a mention there, and they also come up. There's a, another document on there called the subject leaders audit, which has got some questions in there to help you to start to clarify how you're going to present uh, any evidence to a visitor or to your leaders or to your governors as to how the subject you lead addresses uh, some of these key bullet points. As part of this, you know, look at the criteria. So this time I'm going to look at the criteria for impact, the curriculum impact. And as we'll see when we look onto the next slide, and you might have already seen as you looked, if you've looked in your subject leaders resource file, because the three eyes are all writ large in there. They're all in uh, part D of the subject leader's resource files. So you can just see as I just flick to it, I'll move back, four bullet points in the quality of education impact. Each one of them starts with the learners, with pupils. There's a big clue there, isn't there? Whatever I'm going to write about the impact of the learners in my subject is front and center about the pupils. So, ensure that you talk about them and their learning not about us and our teaching when addressing any questions related to impact but clearly you know we can talk about that they're how they're learning and they're learning ever so well and why their learning is ever so well it's because of the very for example the very good subject knowledge that we as teachers have the design we've put into ensuring that in all topics, for example, pupils are always expected to be using subject specific vocabulary. Now that's not just gonna happen by osmosis, does it? does it? It happens because we as teachers plan it. But I think we, if we start thinking about the, the learner at the front, and then we then add in, and they're doing this as a result of the work we are now doing as teachers. I just think that message will then come across so much more clearly that you're focused on 
actually how well these youngsters are doing. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this, but, but in Deep Dive Resource 3, there's at least a page, if not a, a couple of pages, for every subject, where there are a whole variety of questions there that I've collated over many years and put together. Then Clearly, there are far more questions on those pages than you would ever be expected to be asked or be expected to answer, in a, even in a one and a half hour meeting with an Ofsted inspector. But they give a flavour of the sort of questions you could be expected to respond to. And as I say uh, about a number of these resources, my suggestion is go through them, highlight it, tick whatever it is uh, method you use, but indicate those questions that today, as you go through this, you'd feel comfortable in being able to respond to. And then in particular, highlight those that you might find slightly more challenging to answer. And it may well be where we are, where we've been for the past 12 months, that actually you haven't had an opportunity to gather some evidence in order to be able to respond to some of these questions. And we can, you we, you and your schools will be able to address that over coming weeks and months. But there might be also some questions in there. You're just thinking, well, I do find that somewhat more of a challenge than other questions. And my suggestion is, you know, talk to your line manager about that. Don't just hide them and put them away and hope, well, with a bit of luck, I might not get be past that. But actually share it with your line manager and discuss with them, actually, how best could I gather some evidence in order to be able to answer that? Okay. So there's a whole plethora of questions in there. And you might find as you're reading through that some appear quite similar, in which case, you know, don't feel the need to address each one individually, but do work your way through them. Uh, because I know from feedback I'm getting, a lot of colleagues are finding them useful to help them sort of, to be able to articulate to any visitor, be it their head teacher, be it if they had to present to the governing body, if it was part of a peer challenge review, etc. It just helps them to be able to articulate a bit more clearly uh, and confidently uh, the strengths and if there are any areas for development uh, within the subject that you lead. So in this session, I tried to cover up a couple of points around how do we present a consistent message and thinking about the language we use. So as I said, the two points I picked up were about intent is about what we will or more importantly, what the children will, and actually consider with any writing that we do our utmost to get the learner at the start of that, uh, how we're the you know, sentence bullet point. And then finally, I just refer you into that deep dive resource three, uh, and as well as there's some additional support and questions in the subject leader's um, audit document, uh, which is as part of these uh, materials that are available. Well, I do hope you found that of use and of value. And as ever, uh, you've got my email address down there, as well as the email address for the, the Hounslow Education Partnership for any feedback. But I do hope, along with the resources, uh, that these are useful sessions for those who might want to catch up, or for those of you who, who unfortunately, for various reasons, maybe have had to miss one of the sessions of the recent training. Okay, thank you for your time. All the best. Bye-bye.